My name is Terry Calico, and I'm the senior VO designer on Dead Space. In the original Dead Space, Isaac's breathing and heartbeat was such an integral part of the player's connection with Isaac in building immersion and emphasizing the horror experience. Breathing is a huge part of Dead Space and horror films in general that enhance the feeling of being alone and vulnerable. For Dead Space, we're looking back at the core functionality of the original and not only bringing that experience forward, but we're finding ways we can improve it to a level that exceeds expectations in today's generation of games. In the original Dead Space, you would hear Isaac's breathing change and heartbeat ramp up over time when sprinting, when low on health, low on oxygen, during combat, and spike for jump scares or scripted events. All of that will be there. A couple of improvements, for example. In the original, when Isaac was sprinting or injured, you would hear additional grunts to emphasize his level of exertion play simultaneously over top of the bass breathing rate. Exertions, such as melee and stomp, also played over top of the breathing rather than interrupt it. If you listened carefully, you were hearing two voices at the same time. The exerted breaths didn't interject the bass breathing. For Dead Space, we're building a system that supports transitioning respiratory rates through fatigued and low health states seamlessly. As another example, in the original, when Isaac was gasping for air while running out of oxygen, exiting the vacuum of space or using an oxygen refill would instantaneously and unnaturally revert Isaac back to a calm breathing state as if nothing had happened. Exiting vacuum. For Dead Space, you can expect to hear Isaac catch his breath as he recovers from a lack of oxygen. Let's have a listen to this prototyped in game with some placeholder content. And as Isaac catches his breath, you hear it transition back smoothly into the bass breathing cycle. For Dead Space, we're building what is called the Alive System. It encompasses all components of Isaac's breathing and heart rate, vocal exertions, and dialogue influenced by a variety of driving gameplay features. The limbic system is the part of the brain that controls behavioral and emotional responses such as anxiety and fear. When you watch a horror movie or play a scary game, the limbic system can trigger a release of adrenaline into the body, causing a physical response such as increased heart rate. In our game, adrenaline is derived from various values driven by external factors that have a direct influence on Isaac's heart rate BPM. External factors that act as adrenaline are the combat difficulty value, scripted events and jump scares, Isaac's fatigue level, Isaac's oxygen level, and Isaac's health. We want Isaac to reflect how anyone would physically react in the scenario he's placed in, and vice versa, use that to influence the player to feel the same response. For Isaac's scripted dialogue lines, where the player maintains full control of Isaac, we will have three variations of each line to pick from based on his current state. A normal version, a fatigued version, and an injured version. Let's have a listen to how Isaac's fatigue level or being in a low health state can impact Isaac's scripted dialogue in game. Nicole? It's me. Nicole? It's me. Nicole, it's me. Making up Isaac's vitals are his heart rate, respiratory rate, oxygen level, and health. As Isaac is 43 years old, I studied average heart and respiratory rates for his age group at different levels of fitness to land on Isaac's base heart rate of 70 BPM to build up from. As heart rate increases, his respiratory rate increases as well. 
I broke down the respiratory rates into seven breathing cycles mapped out across seven correlating heart rate BPM zones. Each cycle also has fatigued and injured modifiers. All right, let's have a listen to how Isaac's breathing is behaving in game. One thing to note, the breathing and exertion samples that you'll be hearing in game are not gunner right. These are placeholder samples that we recorded for testing all of this functionality out in game as we were building it. And here on screen is our Alive monitor. This is some debug information that we've put together to see Isaac's current breathing cycle, his heart rate, what his breathing state is, if he's inhaling or exhaling, what his fatigue level is, his oxygen level, his health, and the current combat intensity. And if we have Isaac's sprint here, uh, over time you'll start to see his fatigue level increase. And when Isaac's fatigue level gets past a certain threshold, you'll start to hear fatigued breaths, exerted breaths, start to mix in with his regular bass breathing rate. And when Isaac stops sprinting, you'll see his uh, fatigue level start to go down, his heart rate will come down, and his respiratory rate will slow down as well. Here we have Isaac in a very low health state, he's injured. And when he moves around in this state, we start to introduce uh, little winces of pain mixed into his breathing cycle. <sighs> And what's really great about the way we've built this system is that Isaac can be in both an injured state and fatigued state at the same time. So hearing those injured winces, those fatigued breaths mixed in with his regular breathing actually sounds quite natural. And wrapping up the Alive system, we have exertions. These are single one-off exertion events that interrupt or interject between base breathing loops. For example, melee, stomp, hit reactions, and death. Exertions for the most part will end in exhales and restart the breathing loop back up on an inhale. However, the breathing system will have the flexibility to have the option to start the breathing loop back up on an exhale or inhale, depending on the content. Of where you're thinking about going from an improvements perspective, just talk a little bit about, you know, where you're kind of seeing this move. We see Isaac kind of in the space right now, floating around the space, uh, probably going to show off some of his thrusters and, and, and stuff in a minute. Uh, I'd love to hear more about, you know, kind of where you're thinking about in terms of improvements in this layer, too. So for us, really, going back to the original Dead Space, it was something that uh, we felt, so again, super early build, <laughs> that we felt we could... Uh, we could actually improve in terms of, uh, of experience and immersion, it's the zero-g. And how you would move around uh, in zero-g. And that's something that was really good and improving the experience in Dead Space 2 and 3 that we felt was really missing in, uh, in the original Dead Space. And so that's why we, we took that mechanic of uh, of flying around when you're in zero G and with much more 360 degree freedom. And now you can play that space and really feel you in space during, uh, during those moments. And so also that's a mechanic that uh, we've starting to, uh, to improve a bit on. Like for example, now you can interact as, uh, as you fly around, you can go into uh, tighter corridors, those kind of things. But also it allows us to revisit some of the old content and create 
new ways to navigate, new path. Like here in the original, you would have gone back through that door through uh, where you came from. And here, it allows us to create new environments with eventually new challenges to surprise also the people that know the game and uh, will be like, oh, wait, what's that? What's that? <laughs> and now we're going to surprise you. So, so it's really delivering on the fantasy of being in space, making sure that we're able uh, to use that and revisiting all the places in the game in the original where uh, there was Zeruji, uh, which was the Superman jump back in Dead Space 1, and now applying full 360 motion and, and finding ways to... The lighting, the VFX, the fog, but also nail that ambience, give you the feeling that you're in the Ishimura, you're inside those dark corridors. And not only it's in engine, it's actually in game. And here's my boy Isaac. So that rig, that armor, it's not the original, it's... A new one, it's still work in progress, it's gonna be improved a lot, but it gives a first taste at Isaac Clark in, in the remake. Uh, look, here we are. Wow. So, I mean, the lighting, everything looks phenomenal. The smoke. It looks this so is good. Very much what we should be expecting at this point from next generation graphics. It's really dead space, but like you never saw it, I think. Mm -hmm. So. It has been almost 13 years, you know, since the original game came out, the original Dead Space. Why is this remake happening now, and what is what exactly is this remake? Can you elaborate on that? So, one thing that's important for us, and that's why it's for PS5, Xbox Series, or for, or for PC, is that there is not, it's not about one thing. Like, Dead Space is a super strong experience, mm -hmm. and so, it's implemented into combat. Would you mind telling us more so, about the original system versus the new system and what peeling actually means? I, so, I think actually something that's very important, uh, as you can see with the feet, like it, it is definitely a gym, mm -hmm. uh, and, and it's intentional that we, we showcase this in a gym uh, because we're so early with it. Visually, we're not at the right level of quality where we want to achieve. Uh, but we want to showcase functionality here. Mm -hmm. That's what we want to talk about. And, and what is the system that we have in mind for peeling, like you said? So obviously, same thing. It's a really early build. It's a gym. Everything that you see is work in progress. It's first implementation. A lot of VFX are missing. A lot of those modelization are not final and missing a lot of things like flesh tearing, etc. Mm -hmm. But one thing that is important for us that I just show it's first of course, this dismemberment is back, and it's back uh, with all the depth and, uh, and fun you can have in that space. But one thing we wanted to, uh, and those are the only things, those, those are the things you can say only on that space. <laughs> 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 one of the, the things we wanted to improve uh, about, uh, about that experience is when you're using a weapon that is not a carving weapon, like something, mm -hmm. not like the plasma cutter. Plasma cutter is really fun to use. You can just shoot at anything, and uh, really you have that instant feedback of the limb getting cut, etc. But when you had a different weapon, knowing how much damage you were dealing to the enemy, how was he reacting, etc., it was not necessarily as visceral and as clear as the as the original. Mm -hmm. and so that's the thing we are working on at the moment, and we call peeling. It's basically that body destruction technology that we're developing that is allowing us to really remove, so at the moment, the flesh out of the, the bones of the enemy and to give you a good sense not only of gore and horror and ambience, mm -hmm. but also of how much damage am I dealing to that opponent. Is my weapon actually useful against this one? How close? easy to die and that's something for me that is really interesting and so when we were speaking about why doing a remake and where can we improve those are an example of what we can do is that we don't have any more to choose which feature we actually want to push mm -hmm. we can have dismemberment we can have much more precision and body destruction we can have seamless loading for the for the wool ship etc etc and that's something really really uh, interesting uh, for us and another thing that is actually really interesting is that system so again for the moment it's really early for the moment we're only showcasing it on the 
on the naked slasher, so uh, you only see it with the, the flesh, but of, of course later it's gonna support like uh, the claw, body armor, different layers, weak points, etc. But it also improved one of the core of shooting in that space, which is around the precision, and not only the precision of my weapon, but as an example, the precision of the plasma cutter. And so if I was to shoot, let's say, on that leg, then if I'm shooting here, I'm not gonna cut the leg because I'm not shooting at the place where the bone is actually visible. If I need to, if I want to cut that leg now, I need to be much more careful and precise in my aiming and in the shooting. And then for us, what is interesting is that it opened a whole new layer of, uh, of shooting and combat loop where you can have some weapons that are better at carving through the enemies, some weapons that are better at cleaning them. Oh, sorry for the mic. <laughs> some weapons that are better at cleaning, the, at cleaning the enemy and removing the flesh and the tissue, etc. And that's something really, uh, really interesting for us. Anytime uh, Roman speaks about this member, it gets overly passionate and expressive. <laughs> <laughs>